uh, we had talked to you, I guess, in maybe a month. Just uh, just curious to see what you think the culture's like since you've been here and maybe just the, maybe the impact you've had on the defense so far. Um, you know, I, I mean, I love the culture out here. You know, I think that, um, you know, it's a good group of guys. I think that the, you know, from the – the GM to the head coach, you know, they create an atmosphere that uh, kind of builds competition and, uh, you know, holds everybody on the team accountable. I think that, you know, everybody else is holding each other accountable and, um, you know, we're helping each other get better every day in practice. And uh, as far as my role, I think that, you know, you know, I definitely have a, a veteran presence um, in the locker room and amongst the D line, you know, just trying to help, you um, playing multiple positions on the defensive line. So, you know, just helping uh, fill spots, uh, you know, when people are down or, or in, in certain situations. So, you know, I think so far, you know, we've, we've done a lot of good things and we have a lot of things to improve on. And, um, you know, I just like to go day by day and try to figure out what I can improve on too. Teron? Yeah, Jack, now that you've gotten some time to really work with Coach Rabel and this staff, does it impress you how hands-on they are with you guys as far as getting into drills and actually taking part in them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely, I think uh, just Rabel himself, he he likes to get involved in every drill, and then he likes to go into further details, especially with the defensive line, about just technique we work on or, or you know, certain techniques we need to get better at. And, um, you know, he takes it very seriously. And I think that him kind of expressing that sense of urgency from the top down, you know, that, that shows up in, in the players and that shows up all the way down to the practice squad or, you know, the rookies, because they understand that this is not, um, you know, just a day, just a work day. You know, we, you know, we don't just punch in and punch out, you know, we got to come to work with a purpose, and everybody's trying to get better. And I think that seeing that from the top down, there's no excuse. And then as far as the focus on situational football, is that something that you notice is intensified with this staff? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's, you know, definitely an emphasis in um, just in, in the team meetings, especially, you know, uh, Vrabel and, um, you know, some of the offensive defense coordinators, go into detail about, um, you know, just certain situations in football. And there's a lot of situations where being a defensive lineman, you may not think this might not really, uh, uh, this might not really, you know, reference me or preclude to me given this situation. It's more about the defensive backs, whatever, but he makes sure that everybody understands the situation given, you know, whatever, you know, whatever position you're in in the game or given the time left etc you know they 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 go do a good job of trying to express why they make certain decisions in certain situations and then they'll show examples of other teams or even us in the past of what we could have done better given the actual situation eric Hey, Jack, uh, I just want to ask you about uh, Jeffrey Simmons. Uh, Rabel said that he kind of looks to him like like a future captain somewhere down the line. I'm curious if, if you've gotten that impression, you know, just seeing him every day working alongside him. Yeah, he definitely has a lot of leadership qualities to him. Um, you know, I think the a team captain, it doesn't, you know, you don't have to be the most productive player. Um, which he is very productive. So he leads by example, but he also vocal too, which I think is important to have that, that to be a captain is to have that vocal leadership to you. And, uh, and he's accountable, you know, he doesn't take plays off. He studies his playbook. He watches tape. So I just think the accountability as long as, you know, the productivity he's having the performance, how he's playing, and then also being outspoken and leading by example, he, there's no question that he can be a, team captain down in the future and um you know he regardless if he has the captain or not you know he can be a leader uh john glenn yeah jack um similar lines as that question there um is it uh, impressive about jeffrey that he has some of these qualities you know and he's just really beginning his second year uh so i guess yeah not only the the leadership qualities 
but also some of the physical qualities he has in terms of, of stamina, being able to play so many plays, uh, you know, despite being a, a very large human being. Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, being able to, I guess, you like, like you said, the physical uh, presence he has on the defensive line, I think, plays a large role into his, um, you know, his ability to be a leader. I think that he's, he's, you know, the productivity and the, how he's been playing recently, you know, he's been playing really well recently. And I think that that carries over into the locker room, into the meeting rooms, you get you build more confidence that way. And I think that that ultimately kind of over time builds the full package. And I would say, you know, it's um, I'm, I'm impressed, you know, like you said, in his uh, so early on in his career that he's been able to step into that role. But at the same time, it doesn't surprise him because he got the physical ability and it's there. So once you can put that on tape and put that on the field, then the rest follows. Thank you. Uh, David Butler. Jack, you're not a guy who's gotten a lot of playoff experience in your career. Given the expectations around here and how this season has started, do you feel a, a different sort of excitement or enthusiasm or whatever for what's to come here? Um, yeah, I think that when you get off to a winning start, it's uh, you definitely have some excitement building that you can, you know, that you can make it to the playoffs. You know, it's hard to make it to the playoffs in this league, and. Um, you know, I just think that we we have the culture and we have the talent to do that. But it's it's hard to kind of look that far ahead in the future. I mean, as an NFL player, you just you really live your life week to week. And it's hard to look past Sunday in any circumstances. I mean, even in regular life, I just can't plan anything past Sunday because you can only focus on the game. And um yeah, I think, you know, everybody's excited about what we can do here, but we have to bring it to life and we have to get better at a lot of things, you know, to stay the course. So that's all we focus on. Uh, Kayla? Yes. Hey, Jack, uh, a couple of defensive players that we spoke to this week mentioned that the key to this defensive unit improving is communication. Um, to better the communication within the group. Would you agree with that? If so, can you kind of elaborate on it? Yeah, I think, that, you know, whenever there's a breakdown on the field, I mean, all of us know what to do. It's just about knowing what to do at the right time. And um, communication, you know, when it comes to game time, time is of the essence. So, you know, you it's about being comfortable in those situations. It's about being able to execute in those situations. And part of, executing, part of execution is communication. And um, the truth is, in practice, we've been trying to over communicate across 11 guys who are on the field so we can all get on the same page so we can, you know, give up less um, explosive X plays on defense uh, or I guess convert more um, first downs on offense. And so, you know, we've been doing, a, you know, a job like we've been trying our best in practice to kind of over communicate and get that point across because, you know, communication is a big part of it. And if one person is doing one thing and then the other 10 guys are doing something else, you know, that's how you can give up big plays and give up touchdowns on defense. Uh, last one, Jim. Hey, Jack, it's obviously a different world we're living in these days, but uh, just curious about your uh, impressions of Nashville after being here a while and maybe what's something that, that stood out to you about it. So that, can you say that again? Sorry, I, I didn't catch it. I, I said, I know we're in a different world these days now, but I'm just curious to see what your thoughts have been about the city of Nashville since you've been here and maybe what's kind of stood out about it uh, during your couple of first few months here. Oh, um, Nashville is a unique city. Um, you know, I, I've been learning more about it uh, since I've been here. I, you know, the people are very nice out here. Um, like you said, it is a different it is a different world, but to me, it seems like it's growing. I mean, it's a growing city. It's there's cranes everywhere. They keep building. Um, yeah, I mean, it's I, you know, it's different because there's some places in Nashville where you can walk around. Um, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a good city, man. So far, it's been so good, and I you know, I really enjoy it here. It's very scenic. They've got hills out here, so. Um, yeah, so far it's just been, I got nothing but good things to say about this city.